Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we'll talk about the interesting mystery of are the Nazca Lines a code for off-world visitors? As a plain source over the high desert of southern Peru, the dull, pale sameness of the rocks and sand organize a change form. Now, the distant white lines gradually evolve from a ton of brass red. Strips of white, white crisscross, a desert so dry that it rains less than an inch every year. The landscape changes as lines take shape to form simple geometric designs, trapezoids, straight lines, reticles, triangles, and shrills. Some of the shrills and zigzags start to form more distant shapes, a hummingbird, a spider, and even a monkey. These are the renowned Nazca lines, subject for mystery of over 80 years now. How were they formed? What was the purpose that they serve? Were aliens involved in the creation? There are still so, enough, so many questions to be answered. The lines are found in a region of Peru just over 300 miles southeast of Lima, near the modern town of Nazca. In total, there are over 800 straight lines, 300 geometric figures, and 70 animals and plant designs, also called biomorphs. Some of the straight lines run up 30 miles, while the biomorphs range from 50 to 1,200 feet in length, just as large as the Empire State Building in New York. Peruvian archaeologist Toribio Mejia was the first one to systematically study the lines in 1926. However, since the lines are virtually impossible to identify from ground level, they were only first brought to public awareness with the advent of modern aviation. When a pilot flying overhead noticed the stunning geoglyphs back in 1939, over time, dozens more were uncovered. Approximately 70 of the geoglyphs depict complex animal and other natural formations, while the other lines are just simple geometric shapes. American professor Paul Kosok investigated and found himself on the foot of line in the June 22nd of 1941, just one day after the winter solstice. At the end of a full day of studying the lines, Kosok looked up from his work to catch the sunset in direct alignment with one of the lines. Kosok called the 310 square mile stretch of high desert the largest astronomy book that the history has known. The lines are well known as geoglyphs. Drawings of the ground made by removing rocks and earth to create a negative image. The rocks which cover the desert have oxidized and watered to a deep red rust color. And when the top 12 to 15 inches of rock is removed, a light colored high contrasting sand is exposed. Because there's so little rain, wind, or erosion, the exposed designs have been basically intact for 500 to 2000 years. Scientists believe that the majority of lines were made by the Nazca people, who lived there from around AD 1 to 700. The hot, dry climate, infrequent rain, and hot sun that is typical from the region is ideal for preserving the line, while a sub-layer ridge of in line has hardened over the years to provide a further protection from wind erosion. Nevertheless, many believe that there were originally far more shapes than what is visible today. A sunstorm in 2014 uncovered two new patterns of a snake and a llama, adding fuel to the speculation that there are over 700 geoglyphs who might have originally existed. Tests have shown that this occurred over a period of 500 years, most likely between the 1st and 6th century, a prolonged effort to say the least. But one niggling question has remained, why? Many creative theories have suggested that they were created for aliens who visited the region centuries ago. However, in 2004, a team of archaeologists from the Texas State University discovered a headless mummy who was determined to be the victim of human sacrifice. Barrier near the mummy were various pieces of pottery containing similar patterns from the Nazca lines. Furthermore, a number of artworks appearing to depict worshippers dancing around the lines were later uncovered. However, there's another theory that came up in 2017 by Rosa La Zapanora of the National Research Council, who claims that satellite imagery links the Nazca lines to nearby spiral shaped wells called pukios, which were used for irrigation. Her theory is that these well wells fed water through a complex series of canals and underground aqueducts, which could have transported the arid desert into a lush garden oasis, a profound hypothesis which implies that the Nazcas were actually more, far more advanced than what is previously believed. No single evaluation proves a theory to be correct, but the combination of archaeology, ethnohistory, and anthropological builds a strong case for the lines. 
I hope this video added some value to your thoughts. Do share your views in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so and hit the notification button. So I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.